Excellent. Sorry about that. The kettle took longer than it should have. Uh, pop up right. sometimes that happens so, and it do really we goes. have a plan of approach? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was happening. Is the plan approach? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's just fucking see how this goes. Yeah. Okay, so you proceed up to the great tent that is so large that... Well, it's not quite large enough for Rowan to go inside without going down on knees. But wow. before you can even go in, uh, there are two guards and another female Kawinda waiting for you. This one Island is cons- this one is considerably younger, Nawazi, and she is finely decorated with lots of jewels. Rowan, can you make sure you hold on to her throw, please? Will do. This is the <laughs> diplomatic mission of peace. Uh, Koba translates her introduction as I am Isissa, Queen of the Kawinda, proud mate of Kadab- Kagabu. Why do you I seek know. an audience with the finest war leader of our people? Someone else step forward on this, because I'm actually not sure on our motivation. Yeah, why uh, we want them to stop, for, stop attacking Fortune's Land and so that we can establish you know, a can treaty. Tread with them and shit. We I wish for you to stop sacking. Down, Sorry, go on. I explain that we would like the sackings of Fortune's Landing to stop so that we can peacefully coexist. I mentioned that we understand that they settled on land that was theirs. Yes, that as well. We unaware of their custom, blah, blah, blah. We did blah. not know of your customs and we wish to make things right by potentially opening up trade with yourselves. Hmm. You would offer wares for peace. This could be acceptable. Excellent. However, it is not my decision to make. That's excellent. Please, let us move on. Come on inside and you can meet my husband. Okay. When we walk in, I immediately just say, I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> my husband, you where? Do about that. My husband, where? Come home for a second. I, I might have this. to stay outside. I don't know. Probably I mean, not. most of the decor in here, like there's still skulls and bones around the place, but you can tell in this case they're human. Okay. Okay. Including and sitting on the throne at the heart, biggest Kawinda you've ever seen, <coughs> who you would have to guess is Kagabu. Kagabu. And he is, after a fashion, wearing human clothing. Mm. Specifically, in the same way that many of his men, pelts and hunting trophies, he is wearing what appears to be the uniforms of General Crest's men, variously sewn together to fit him. <laughs> Excellent. I love that. Should we go outside? Um, I'm gonna keep at his belt, he is wearing a massive steel sword. Oh, okay. Me, me, me and Rowan will go and sit outside. Wink. We'll wait. And he immediately gets up out of the throne and draws the sword. Oh, no, I insist. Sit down. I pull out the token. He does see the token and with reluctance sheathes the sword. Uh, the great Kagabu would know what you want of him, tiny pink man. Um, I expect explain it all again that I, what I just explained to you. Yep, again, you repeat yourselves. He kind of glares at Isaisa and is he doesn't look happy and just, through the translation of Koba, states that this was to be the glorious war, the war to make his name. How is he to become known as the greatest of war chiefs if he bows down to a token and a See. promise? Hold that thought just a second. Can I just turn around and talk to the party quietly? Yes, he will allow you time to consult Excellent. internally. Guys, the um, dum dum dum. The guy who sent us on this mission says he wants an army to take back uh, the homeland. Mm-hmm. Why don't we? Could, do, you think, do you think we could convince this guy that that's the right thing? Yeah. The true yeah. glorious war. Yeah. It could be. It would mean. <laughs> it would mean that he is. Uh, the greatest warlord, not only of Kirin Yaga, but also of Absolutely. the other place. Yeah, and uh, motherfuckers love titles. Yeah. And... That's a good point. So basically we're going to make this guy our Khaleesi. Yeah. I suspect if we're going for metaphors, he'd be more of a Khal Drogo, but there you go. I don't know. Yeah. Those words. There's something to be said as well for the fact that, um, you know, just fighting doesn't make a leader. You have to be able to, to bath with people to trade. You have to be <laughs> it's not our problem to not make him a warlord. We just want to map things. I don't mean it, I don't mean it the way you think I do. I just mean he's saying that this is to be the war to end all wars and everything. Like there are other wars, but what's also important is keeping your people alive through the wars. So he'll probably not want to 
fight them when he could fight something better. So okay, okay. So he he's actually paying attention to Taylor when she when Taylor says all that and Cobra translates. Because he actually kind of leans in to the elf, like he leans in her direction and says, "Do you suggest then that these fellow people of yours in the coast are not worthy of my great army?" As their cogs of society, I would argue that they are not worth anything. These people came to your land unannounced and started to destroy stuff. That's not as far as as far as I'm concerned. You have every right to be angry. But that doesn't mean that they are without might. It doesn't mean that they are without without ability to persuade, just to talk to them and, and trade with them and, yes, assist them. You can be enemies, but you could also have a truce and that would lead everybody to greater understanding. It seems the pack speaker was not unwise. Mm. However, you must understand, I am a warrior. I need proof that what you say is backed up not only by the strength of your mind, but by the strength of your arms. Therefore, everyone should flex. Forever. I have strong arms. There was but one tribe to be brought into my coalition. We marched and destroyed your pathetic hovel by the sea. Yeah, I thought it was about that, didn't I? Yes. There was but one that has not yet come to me. Therefore, I will make you a deal, men of another land. Bring me the head of that tribe. Not all of him, just his head. And if you can do this, then you will have proven yourselves mighty warriors. I may just listen to what you have to say if we are equals. Do we where, have an accord? Where is this tribe and who is this leader? He is the leader of the shallow main tribe. They lie to the east of here. My scouts can lead you to them. Is there anything more for us to gain from this alliance? I will bring the final tribe and become the greatest leader of our people in a hundred generations. And while I promise nothing, I can promise you that I will simply hear the words of you and your people. I will not agree to them outright, but I will hear what you have to say and what you have to offer in exchange for our land. Okay, quick huddle, everybody else. <laughs> okay. We don't have an army if he disagrees with us. If he so decides he's well, united the entire tribes, he could get a warrior's hard on and try and decimate the camp anyway. Any ideas? I have none, just saying outright. Yeah, yeah, please say outright, because this silence is... And I, I, I missed, like, the past few minutes. Okay. What, what, what's the problem? He wants us to bring his, him the head of the last tribe that he couldn't assuage to his side. Doing that, he says he will simply listen to what we have to say. He like should be listening to us anyway. How about we kill one of his guys to prove that? Mm, you see, that, yeah. But then if he does turn on us, there's a lot more of them than us. And we don't have an army to defend that little shy hole of a town anywhere. I still think we should. Do you think we should do this thing and then try and convince him that the greatest war is actually out to sea, like back at what's his name? Because even though they're in like the up the uh, changings of a revolution, there'll still be enough people to militarize against a foreign threat. I think at this stage, all we can really do is do what he wants. I don't know. I'm just pack horse. I take you places. I, well, uh, at, this, at this stage, I think we should just do what he says. Okay. Agreed then. Okay. He might turn on us, but that's the risk we have to take, I suppose. At the end of the day, there are thousands of them here. There are 2,000 of them here. If we start a fight with this guy now, we're not going to get out now. All we can do is bide time, really. He's not going to let us go from here now. We've walked into the spider's web, and we're not going to be able to leave. I just think like this is the kind of guy that you need to show might with might. I get granted, if I'm wrong on that, we all die, but it's like, he's going to have us doing all his bullshit and not keeping his side of anything. I mean, if it's like, he wants us to kill someone just to listen to an offer. He's not going to accept it. He's just going to use us for power. And this is already not enough of our problem to be this fucked about it. I mean, I do agree. I'm with you all the way. <laughs> so your, in fact, response to the entire 
plot line so far is I think you've mistaken me for someone who gives a fuck. Yeah, it's non fat, not my fucking problem. Like ninety five percent of this is not <laughs> <Basically. my> issue. <laughs> you All got right, sent I, to make a map. This I, is you're not here for war. I turn to the guy and I say, We accept these terms. Nods and say take what supplies you need from my camp. I will send a guide to lead you. I take my leave. Be- before I leave the tent, I'll, I'll let the rest go. Uh, I'll, I'll just and say, do you have any prisoners that need taken care of? I kind of need to vent. Prisoners? I don't know. He does kind of point over to one corner where there's several humans chained to the wall. Oh, you say you're human? There are humans chained to the wall. Hmm. Oh. Ah, that's not good enough. Nah, never mind. I'll just see the bit until our next combat. Do <laughs> you have the urge to beat up a lion, motherfucker? I have the urge to kill some people. I mean, for what it's worth, if there's one thing you've learned about the is that they are violent, capricious, and they like eating people. But as yet, you've yet to see one outright lie, for what it's worth. So, do you want to take him up on his offer to take supplies from the camp? Yeah, what does he have? Uh, they've got food rations, they've got crossbow bolts, they've got um, a few supplies of firewood and torches, and one of them even offers you one of their crossbows. Anything in the way of potions, healing potions? Nope. No, just more of the more of the bizarrely vodka-like grain alcohol that Aiden purchased. Yeah, I'll 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 drink my my half flask and fill up here. Yeah, no problem. If I can't kill someone, I can at least get drunk. What time is it? No, in game. <laughs> oh, in game. Um, the sun is setting. Okay, so we're gonna need to sleep soon. We're gonna need to camp soon. We're not. I mean, we wouldn't be welcome here to sleep, would we? I mean, probably not. That wouldn't be best for us to like make our attack on this place at night, anywhere. Uh, how 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 much how much for the torches? Uh, they they've been told to give you a reasonable. I'd like. Yeah, they, they hand them to you. Uh, you may have five. It's essentially a stick wrapped in oiled cloth at the top, but hey. If it works, it works. Yes. And, uh, Levy, could you please mm-hmm. do something for me? Oh. Could you please roll a perception check? I, I would rather not, but sure. You're going to, bitch. I figured. <sighs> oh, shit. Oh, God, that's <laughs> creepy. Oh wow, how do you have a minus in perception? What the fuck, dude? Whoa. <laughs> the fuck is that? Don't eat the microphone! If you can do it, I can do it too. A little high on the game there, buddy. <laughs> oh, this feels wrong to you. Good yeah, boy. Specifically, it feels like something's out of balance in your brain. And the feeling uh, is coming from a tent off to your left. What time is it currently? 9pm. Right. How dark is it currently? It is like the sun is just on the horizon. Right. Like it's it's practically nighttime, but there's still a sliver of sun. I am going to specifically tell people in the party that something in that tent is creeping me out, and I'm going to go investigate. Okay. Yeah, I'll join in. It might be something to punch. <laughs> and I go investigate. So, inside the tent, you immediately smell acid. There is a male Kawinda <clears throat> lacking most of his mane to singe marks. At work over a bubbling cauldron. Can you try the alchemy? Okay. Uh, I would like to craft alchemy to identify what the hell is in the cauldron. Okay, roll it. Wow. You have no fucking clue. Except it's assy of some kind. I mean, it's making your <laughs> eyes water. So yeah. Nice. And he does Wait. look up at you and growl something in the native language. To take a sip? No. No, not of that stuff, of the, the communication wine. But didn't we use all of it? But if we have it, sure. you've got like they, a they, liter of it. They gave us a liter of it. We found like a sip for each of the parties. Right. That's I it. thought it was like a tiny little fucking sample flask. No, they they gave you a bottle. You have a whole liter. Enough to do a few things. Right. Take a sip of it and just kind of look at him again after. Um. He wants to know what the fuck you're doing in here. <laughs> what you cooking? Trying to get the acid reflex out of my brain. Ah, oh, you are interested in my experiment. Indeed. Are you perhaps? Another follower of the way. Likely. Not that we call it that where I'm from. <laughs> what do you call the way of the serpent? I would assume what you would call the way of the serpent is what we refer to as alchemy. Ah. 
then perhaps you would be interested in this. And he takes a cloth off of something behind him, and your headache feeling gets ten times worse. Just kind of, oh, God, why? Why? Groaning in pain. It was a chunk that fell from the sky. Note its shine, yes? Meteorite piece. And it appears to be like a jagged, vaguely ovaloid rock that looks like it's made of spiky obsidian to you. Mm, not a good time. Uh, could I roll alchemy to see if I can identify what it is? I doubt yeah. it'll kind of do anything, but... Yeah, you can go right ahead. Oh! oh wow. I should be fucking named after you. You haven't got a fucking clue. I figured. Uh, wow. Believe me, I am not fudging this. Like, he... No, because I need Arcana to do anything with that, or Spellcraft, probably. Oh yeah, you do. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> but guess what? It's the two skills on my skillers I didn't put points into. Says, because I figured we had mages in the party. a very interesting reaction. You caught me at a fine phase of the experiment. Oh? What, what happens when I do this? And he picks it up with a pair of large tongs that appear to be made out of something's antlers, lifts it out of its cradle, and dunks it in the cauldron. Which begins to oh, spark. God. Oh, you motherfucker. And at this point, from your perspective, Aiden, what appears to be a bolt of lightning shoots out of the cauldron and hits the clean well, causing Fuck. him to full-on backflip, feet overhead, before landing on his face in the mud. Well, okay. That's the rock, something. meanwhile, has been projected out of the cauldron and is embedded in a wooden panel in the ceiling that appears to be there for that purpose. Yes. Uh, I'm glad you didn't say it was embedded in his head. No. I, I'm just gonna... I, I, I ain't got time for none of this shit. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. I'll, I'll drag Levy out by his feet. Just yes. You okay there, buddy? Uh, well, as near as you can tell, Levy's skin appears to be glowing under his white coat. Mm, I'm gonna stop dragging him. <laughs> Don't wanna touch it. Am I around? I mean, yeah, I suppose so. Can I roll an arcana check on him to see if he's okay? Yeah. yeah, you can if you want to. Should I roll nature or arcana? Uh, arcana's probably your better bet. Um, you know that he shouldn't be glowing and something magical clearly hit him full in the face, but beyond that you haven't got a fucking clue. Is he awake? Is he conscious? Uh, he is awake and he appears to be garbling random syllables. And also groaning in between. <laughs> yeah. Because, ow. But the glow does fade in time, and soon Levy appears to be back on his senses, and the glowing has stopped. I sit with him until he's okay. Beans lands on his lap and licks his cheek. Yeah, he does. I pet the beans. What happened to you? Are you alright? I mean, it feels like Rowan jumped on the back of my head, but I'm okay. I help him stand up. I am very, very wobbly. You can hold on me until we get back to the camp. Mm. I help him along until we reach the others. Uh, so yeah, Rowan's hair is standing up on end. Sorry, not Rowan's, uh, Levy's oh, hair is standing up on end. Although something weird has happened to him. What's up, Whatever man? the result of the reaction was, quote, apart from the slightly frazzled look, um, I'm just going to send something as a private message here, because Lime doesn't know what it is yet. <laughs> oh boy. But Fozzo does. Oh, huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, Isla would notice too. I'm just trying to fucking find. So yeah, the party um, gets back together. So Levy had fun. No, Levy. I didn't. <laughs> Did not. The Levy. No. no, thank you. <laughs> I mean, he does have a near perfect no. circular scorch mark directly between his eyes. Uh, mm. you got to give it something Ow, fuck. I think he's okay now, other than the obvious. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't seem to have been hurt by the arc of lightning that hit him in the face. Just nobody mentioned the obvious to him. What happened? What's that on your face? <laughs> <laughs> Is it pain? <laughs> I mean, that, I'm just going to, like, pat myself in the forehead with a hand, like, what? Um, so you kind of feel a crackling, like, of static electricity in your hair when you touch up. Can we never deal with anything like that again? <laughs> Please. <laughs> sure thing, buddy. Mm. At this point, several of the nearby Kawinda are laughing at you. 
And as you are walking around, because Rowan takes good care of Rowan's shield, Rowan's shield is polished to a mirror shine. Can I Your admire hair myself in it? Appears to have gone from its natural white to a curious electric blue. Woo! <laughs> Danny Phantom looking ass. <laughs> Congratulations, Levy. You're now quirky. <laughs> yeah. I got Alice fucking zapped. <laughs> you did get zapped and now your hair is blue. Oh, actually, I have an idea. I wonder how much static electricity I have left in my body. Let's try and touch a riot and see how much of a zap I can generate. Catch me, Danny Phantom. Zap. <laughs> Okay, Araya, uh, are you actually dodge being poked? Probably, seeing as he's... St- oh, I've just deleted myself. Okay, oh, please wow. roll what a the- standard unarmed melee attack to try and hit him then, please. Uh, oh god. And this I- will be rolled against Araya's flat-footed save. Oh. Well, I don't have unarmed strike, so I have no proficiency in it. This is a flat d20. Does that beat your flat-footed... AC. AC flat-footed, yes. No, it doesn't. My AC flat-footed is 14. Okay, you're good then. He does not hit you. <laughs> Lap is lazily looking ass. <laughs> so, out on adventure. I feel 65 looking ass. <laughs> James from Team Rocket looking ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think we need to eat with Rogue. Fucking Rogue's Sonic Rogue's. the Hedgehog looking ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, how does Levy feel about these taunts? Describe his I think state I state. think you should all realize that Levy is the type of guy who has bombs on him on a daily basis. Blue bombers, <laughs> no, 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 no. spectrum. I I, I I say that Levy looks all right and that, uh, that the change is nice, but uh, if he prefers his white hair, I'm sure it will grow up to be white again. I say he looks sad. I mean, you <laughs> say looks that. A bit blue. <laughs> but can I assume that all this commentary is making Levy's temp rise? Is he that kind of person? I think it suits him. Yes, because it's just annoying, not because it's technically a slight as such. Right. <laughs> Everyone else except Levy. As he gets increasingly agitated, the hair is turning orange. It's got mood <laughs> hair. Oh, it's mood <laughs> hair. And it then turns Oh, the tears look at us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, us. us. Jersey Shore look at us. Uh, I'm there. going to force <laughs> both of you bombs in your fucking sleep. <laughs> it is now bright Don't red and flickering me. like flames. With his <laughs> anger. This guy again looking at us. Monster Munch looking at us. Can I just say, I love how <laughs> Rowan just tried to escape artists out of this situation. <laughs> That's just pure fuck this shit up. Know he's got mood hair and electric powers. Knock off Ferrari looking Fear up. me, I'm a Shadowrun character. <laughs> okay, okay, calm. What are we doing next? This is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, Levy's hair now looks like a standing up flame. All, all three flavors of Doritos looking up. It's <laughs> 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 fucking Garo looking up. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I, we legit need to stop, this hurts. <laughs> yeah, I think the rust's are getting too much. I'm getting a head rush. <laughs> As the taunting dies down, Levy's hair dies, slowly kind of fades back down into its nap, into blue. And you mean it's died back to blue because fucking mood hair. Yeah, it goes back <laughs> to blue and then it just kind of droops back down from its pointy fire position back into its normal <laughs> hair-like pose. <laughs> this fucking Super Saiyan bullshit. <laughs> it's not even his final form. <laughs> but next? you do notice at this point that even the blue is fading and it gradually returns to his natural white. <laughs> and, uh, Levy, Levy, you feel the feeling of built up static in your body is finally dissipated. Damn it, I was going to try different emotions on him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, all you need to do. Well, actually. Hmm. No, we just have to get this this mystical thing that no one knows what it was and smack him in the head again. <laughs> just drag him back to the tent and say, do it again! <laughs> well, that was fun. I mean, I mean Mutair in fun. real life would be pretty cool. Yeah, but then you'd have to wear hats. You're right on that. Yeah, I need to I've bottle my of... shit up, thank you. Rowan having Mutair would be kind of cool. 
I imagine it would always be like a really serene sort of colour until so, me and Araya start acting up. Yeah. Okay, so what's next? Right, well, I guess you're heading out on your. Yeah, we gotta go and murder someone. Okay, yeah, alright. Murder yeah. party! But now that you are set on your course, that shall have to wait for next week. Oh! Uh... Dun dun dun! It has been three hours. Yeah, that's a good point. It has been a long It's been long. three hours and we've used up the material I have. <laughs> so, cool. That works out perfectly then.